Here I've got a nice formula for the area of a general quadrilateral. So this is called Brett Schneider's formula. So let's see what we have for our quadrilateral. I've named the vertices A, B, C, D. And then we have side lengths A, B, C, D. Vertices are uppercase and side lengths are lowercase. Furthermore, I've labeled two angles. This angle here is measurement alpha, and this angle here has measurement gamma. Then finally, we want to define something called the semi-perimeter, which is half the perimeter. So it's really aptly named. We have S is A plus B plus C plus D over 2. And then Brett Schneider's formula says the area of this quadrilateral is given by the square root of S minus A times S minus B times S minus C times S minus D minus a, B, C, D, cosine squared, alpha plus gamma over two. So we will do most of the steps to derive this formula. I'll leave just a pretty trivial step for you guys to do at the very end, and then we'll finish it off with something pretty ridiculous, which is to check that this formula works for a square with side length x. So let's work on the derivation of this formula. So we're going to start by partitioning this quadrilateral into two triangles. And so we'll do that by connecting a line segment between B and D. So like that. And so like I said, now we have two triangles and we can notice that our area is in fact the sum of the area of these triangles. So let's say we've got area A, B, D plus the area of triangle, let's see, B, C, D. Great. And now we'll use a pretty well-known formula for the area of a triangle based on these two side lengths and this angle. So a little bit of trigonometry will allow you to calculate the height of the triangle in terms of these side lengths and this angle. I'm going to leave that for you guys. So we can see the area of this triangle ABD will be equal to one half and then A times D times sine alpha. And then furthermore, the area of this triangle has a similar form, so that'll be one-half B times C times sine of gamma, like that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take this and multiply it by 16 and then square it. Well, actually, we're going to take it and multiply it by 4 and then square the whole thing. And this is just so that everything works out without having to work with fractions the whole time. So if I take this and I look at four times the area, that will give me 2AD sine alpha plus 2BC sine gamma. And then squaring will give me 16A squared equals. So now I have to multiply this out. I'll have 4A squared D squared sine squared alpha plus 4b squared c squared sine squared gamma. So those are the pure terms. And then I have some cross terms. And those cross terms here will be 8 a, b, c, d sine alpha sine gamma. I have 8 because of the 2 times 2, but I've got two copies of that. So that'll be 4 plus 4. Okay, so that's 16a squared. Now we'll use the law of cosines to come up with an identity which we will add and subtract to the right hand side of this equation. Okay, so let's use the law of cosines on this triangle over here, triangle ABD. So that says that A squared plus D squared minus 2AD times cosine of alpha is equal to BD squared. So just to reiterate, this equation right here comes from using the law of cosines on this triangle A, B, D. Okay, but now let's notice that this line segment B, D is shared between triangle A, B, D and triangle B, C, D. So now we'll apply the law of cosines to triangle B, C, D as well. Notice we'll get a B, D squared again, and then on the other side of the equation, we'll have B squared plus c squared, then minus 2bc cosine gamma. But now I'm going to rewrite that. Well, I guess I should say, first of all, we're going to forget about this thing in the middle right here. We don't need that length. If we did, we would give it a better name. 
And now we'll rewrite this a little bit. But now moving some things around here, we see that we get the equation a squared minus b squared minus c squared plus d squared is equal to, let's see, 2ad cos alpha and then minus 2bc cos gamma. Okay, nice. So just to reiterate, I moved this b squared c squared to the other side and I moved this cosine term to the other side coming up with this equation. Okay, so now what we'll do on the next board is we'll take this guy right here, this 16a squared equation, and to the right-hand side, we will add and subtract the same term, but we will subtract it in this form, and we will add it in this form. Okay, so let's jump to the next board. So here's where we were left so far. We had 16a squared was this expansion on the first line, so let's see, we've got 4a squared, d squared, sine squared, theta, and then some other terms. And now we're adding and subtracting the same term. And actually it's the square of the formula that we had on the last board. So we're adding it in this form, 2ad cosine alpha minus 2bc cosine gamma, all squared. And we're subtracting it in this form, a squared minus b squared minus c squared plus d squared, all squared. Okay, and now we're ready to get going. Let's see what happens when we square this thing out. So if we square this thing out, we'll get a 4a squared d squared cosine squared alpha. I can combine that with the 4a squared d squared sine squared alpha. So just to write that out carefully, I've got 4a squared d squared and then sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha. So that's what I get from the first term of squaring this. Then from the last term of squaring this, I will get a companion for this guy up here. So that'll look something like 4 b squared c squared and then sine squared gamma plus cosine squared gamma. Nice. And now I have my cross term, which in this case will be minus 8 a b c d cosine alpha cosine gamma. But that's almost exactly like this. It's just I have a cosine instead of a sine, so I can combine it with that. That'll give me something like plus 8ABCD. And then I have sine alpha, sine gamma minus cosine alpha, cosine gamma. Okay, so that's what we get from taking this big square term right here and combining it with the trig functions up here. Now, I'm just gonna bring this one down. So that's gonna be minus a squared minus b squared minus c squared plus d squared, all squared. And now we're gonna look for some trigonometric identities. Some of these are like very obvious. So of course, sine squared plus cosine squared is one. It's also one right here. And then we have another trigonometric identity for this sine alpha sine gamma minus cosine alpha cosine gamma. So that's indeed equal to the negative of cosine alpha plus gamma. So anyway, I'll let you guys look that up. So we can take this minus sign and have it flip this right here. So let's do that as we move on to the next step. So that'll leave me with four a squared d squared plus 4b squared c squared and then minus 8a b c d cosine alpha plus gamma and then minus this thing which just comes down a squared minus b squared minus c squared plus d squared all squared. And now we're gonna add and subtract the same thing again, but in this case, we're gonna add and subtract a, b, c, d. So now I'll rewrite this as four a squared d squared plus four b squared c squared. Here I'll add eight a, b, c, d. But then when I subtract it, I'll combine it with this term. So that'll leave me minus eight a, b, c, d. And then I have one plus cosine alpha plus gamma, like that. Then bringing that last term down, I have minus a squared minus b squared minus c squared plus d squared, that is all squared. 
Okay, now we're gonna use another trig identity. So let's notice this guy right here is exactly two times the cosine squared of alpha plus gamma over two. So that's a fairly well-known power reducing trig formula. Next, this guy right here will also factor. So this factors nicely as AD plus BC quantity squared. Okay, so now that we have that, let's bring that information to the top and we're actually almost done. So I've rewritten what we had on the last board to summarize it as follows. So I've got this term, which is a polynomial in A, B, C, D. This one is as well. And then I've got my trigonometric term. Notice my trigonometric term after being divided by 16 looks exactly like that. So that means all that's left to show is that this difference is exactly what we need it to be. But let's notice that that's a difference of squares. So we can use that fact. That will be equal to A, D plus B, C plus this. So that'll be plus A squared minus B squared minus C squared plus D squared. And then A, D plus B, C minus all of this. So that'll be minus A squared plus B squared plus C squared minus D squared. And then finally we have this minus 16 a b c d cos squared alpha plus gamma over 2. Okay, good. So now all that's left to do is show that this product is exactly what we need it to be up here. And this is where I'm going to stop and leave it just as a little bit of a homework exercise. It's fairly trivial, just symbolic manipulation. But what you end up with after doing that is exactly 16s minus a squared and then s minus b squared and then s minus c squared, s minus d squared, and then minus this 16 trigonometric formula, cosine squared alpha plus gamma over two. But now dividing by 16 and taking the square root will give us our final formula. Okay, so let's get rid of this calculation and then we'll finish it by finding the area of a square. So now we're gonna use this crazy formula for the silliest thing possible, and that is to find the area of a square of side length x. So notice if the side length is x and we have a square, then that means that a equals b equals c equals d equals x. All of these side lengths are x. But then we can easily calculate this semi-perimeter. So this semi-perimeter is x plus x plus x plus x over 2, but that'll be equal to 2x. But then finally, because x is a, b, c, d, we know s minus a is the same thing as s minus b, which is s minus c, which is s minus d, which is x. Furthermore, if we have a square, we know alpha is equal to 90 degrees. We know gamma is also equal to 90 degrees, which means alpha plus gamma over 2 is also 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians. But the cosine of 90 degrees, or the cosine of pi over 2 radians, is equal to 0. So that means this guy right here zeroes out. So that means my area becomes the square root of x to the fourth minus x to the fourth times zero, again, because of my cosine term zeroing out, but the square root of x to the fourth is x squared, just as we needed it to be. And that's a good place to stop.